Hi everyone, I've timestamped this video, so feel free to jump around to the effects that you're most interested in, and at the end I'll show you how to download all of these effects. So first let's have a listen to a short demo of what effects can achieve in Musical 4 with this short piece that I've written. So let's start with the original version that doesn't have any of those effects and uh, let's add them until we get the end result that I was going for. And let's begin with the one that most people will want access to, which is the reverb. A reverb effect mimics the reflections of sound that occur in a room or other space, giving us the audio version of a background. It also tends to smoosh together and smooth out the instruments, so most cinematic music, particularly strings and piano, uses quite a lot of reverb. Whereas big band jazz will use very little because we want to hear the crispness of the articulation. When you open the mixer, you can see that each instrument has its own reverb amount and on off switch. If you're not used to using mixer software, this is what's called a send effect. So instead of adding a reverb effect to each instrument, a copy of the audio for each instrument is made, added together, and sent to a single reverb, which is in the AUX1 channel. And this has a few benefits. One, lower processor usage, particularly on large scores. Reverb effects tend to be fairly high users of processor power. Two, the ability to customize the amount of reverb per instrument. So you could do things like add more reverb to instruments that you want more in the background of your music, and less to soloists and foreground players. And three, the ability to balance your reverb, but then increase or decrease the overall reverb amount with one fader, instead of having to adjust each effect. Musical 4 comes with a default amount of reverb send, going to this Muse reverb in Auxiliary 1, which is probably going to be fine for most users, but can't be opened up to change the settings at all. However, it's easy enough to change this to a different reverb effect, such as Muse Effects Reverb. And yes, they have provided two different reverb effects. This gives you a bit more freedom to choose the type of room that you want, as well as how much reverb to add. My preference would be to dial it all the way up, and then use the fader to control how much reverb you get, because you can change this easily on the mixer. If you want even more control of the reverb, you can download your own VST3 reverb effect, there are a number of websites that offer free reverb effects. These may allow you to change other parameters such as the size of the room, the length of the reverb tail, the strength of early reflections compared to the reverb tail. Honestly, it's a rabbit hole, but you can have a lot of fun customizing your reverb sound. The next most common effect that gets reached for is the EQ, or equalizer. This adjusts the relative strength of frequencies of an instrument, which is another way of saying it affects the timbre. The free Pro EQ effect from Muse Effects is fairly basic, with four volume controls for each different frequency range, each with their own focus control as well. Perhaps my ears aren't as good as they should be, but I think the focus knob narrows the bandwidth of the main controls 
so that they affect more frequency if focus is to the left, and only a small range of frequencies with the focus knob on the right. Once again, Muse is not giving us much to go on, so you have to play around with the controls to really understand their effect. But essentially, the high frequencies should adjust the airiness and space, possibly the articulation. The mids will mostly be a kind of presence of the sound. Low mids tend to affect the warmth. And the lows will add or remove beefiness, obviously not really applicable in a flute. So this can be a good place to start when you want to tweak the sound of any instrument. Once again, you could download other VST3 EQ effects with far more control. Compressors are also fairly common, and they could be really helpful with the Muse sounds. The complaint I've heard from many people is that soft dynamics like piano and pianissimo are too quiet, and forte can be too blaring. The trumpet is an excellent example of this. A compressor squashes the dynamic range into a smaller region, making louder and softer closer together. The Muse effects compress is once again very basic, with a simple preset selector and a wheel to dial it in. And again, they don't tell us what the wheel does. Intuitively, it should be how much the dynamic range gets squashed, which would be the ratio on a standard compressor effect. The presets are presumably different settings of the threshold, which controls how much of the range is left alone compared to the squashed, as well as attack and release. It would be really nice if there was some documentation around these effects that could explain these things for those of us who are interested. While this effect may help, you could be better off finding your own compressor effect that gives you more control. There's definitely a difference. To pull everything together, Muse Effects has provided the master effect, which works best on the master bus, where it affects the whole ensemble just before it gets sent to your speakers. The master effect is another of those mystery plugins with just a preset full of vague descriptions and a dial. Normal mastering effects would primarily lift the volume, hence the clean maximizer, possibly adding a bit more compression and some gentle EQ like the lush high end and the warm presence options. And they could also include stereo spreading effects, like the stereo depth. And this one also includes options like tape and vintage, which are meant to emulate these older media, probably with EQ. For most users, these will be fine and may just eke out a little more music from your composition. But if you're looking to get really nitpicky, Isotope's Ozone plugin is an industry standard mastering tool that has control of all these parameters every step of the way. It can be a bit pricey though. So now that we've explored the most common effects, it's time to get a little creative and crazy. The reverb is on auxiliary 1, and by default that's the only auxiliary channel you see. But MuseScore 4 has another one ready to go, which can be found by going to the three dots in the top right of the mixer, view, and choosing auxiliary channel 2, and again auxiliary send 2. I want to create a kind of a dreamscape on these percussion and keyboard instruments. And I'll do that by layering a few effects onto this Auxiliary 2. So first, let's send these instruments to the Auxiliary 2 instead of to our normal reverb. And I'll do that just by switching off the reverb and making sure that these other instruments are not being sent to the Auxiliary 2. 
then I'll add a delay to auxiliary two. This effect has a bit more control than the others as it has presets, but also allows you to change the length of the delay in left, right, or both together. For this effect, I like the bumble beat with quaver triplets in stereo, and I turned it all the way up for maximum effect. I can imagine more gentle versions working well for drums and guitars to just give them a bit of flavor. Let's also give that delayed sound a big reverb to make it more dreamy. Let's try the ethereal preset and also turn that all the way up. And finally, let's add an EQ to just adjust the tone of this effect. I'll take out some of the high frequencies to remove some of the definition and add some low mids to give that warm fuzzy sound. That's quite a fun effect and that reverb really lasts a long time. Notice how if I use the fader on the instrument, let's say the Celesta, the sound going to the effects also decreases along with the fader. This is called a post-fader send. In other words, the copy is made after the fader in the signal chain. If I was doing this in a digital audio workstation, I would want to make this a pre-fader send and reduce the amount of the original sound but still get as much as I want of the effect sound. Unfortunately, that's not yet possible in MuseCore 4, so I'll try to get a similar effect by turning down the instrument faders, let's say around minus 12, and then turning up the effect to its maximum of plus 12. And that seems to work quite well for now. And these are the main effects that I enjoy using in MuseScore 4. To download any of these effects, you can just go to the Muse Hub, go to Effects, and choose Get on any of these effects. So for instance, if I wanted the Pitch Fix effect, I can Get it, which will download, and install. And then to use it, obviously we can go into the Mixer and choose Muse Effects we will find that we need to just close and open MuseScore again for the new effect to appear here in the list. Perhaps you have some favorite VST effects that you'd like to tell us about and the way you use them in MuseScore. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And of course, as always, please subscribe. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.